uh, my theme is uh, the implementation of mesh network based on nano sensors. I'm from Technical University of Moldova. So the general concept was to build some kind of device which be been able to integrate into some kind of infrastructure less network to have a good coverage of sensing nodes or sensing levels to make uh, monitoring over the area. Uh, of course, we are not trying to monitor some great areas because if you build a wireless network, there is always a limit of nodes you may integrate into it. But uh, we are planning at least uh, to have the higher limit of some kind of 10 of hundreds of thousands. Now we gained uh, the level of thousands, just thousands, but theoreti theoretically, uh, there will be no problem to add some new devices. So uh, I think uh, we will gain this kind of networks even more developed. Uh, why we are going to do this? What's the general point? Um, of course, as I said, uh, the, bi the big advantage of some this kind of network is to have the infrastructure less property, which means we don't need any access points. We don't need any GSM coverage of, or our coverage of uh, existing networks. Uh, we want, uh, and we already have the possibility to add new nodes without additional configuration. Um, the big thing which I'm going to talk additionally is to make a node uh, autonomous, which means that we don't want to, uh, to access this node periodically to make some kind of maintenance or charging or changing of some parts, for example, batteries. We really don't want to do that. That's why we are going uh, and we integrated the, the solar panels to make these nodes work by themselves totally. And uh, one thing which is uh, great for these networks, we may create some kind of heterogeneous network, which means that every node may be different in his kind. For example, one node may measure one type of gas, another node may, may measure humidity or temperature, and so on. Every node may be configured and created to build to measure some something more specific. Of course, we cannot create totally different nodes. They should uh, at least support the, the common communication protocol. But this is this is some simple obvious thing, which it is inev inevitable. Also, uh, the parameters which are measured are different and they can be even more different. The architecture of one single node is an obvious one. There is nothing very complicated because we, we want to keep it autonomous, which means it should be simple. We have a sensing module, sensing element. In our case, it's based on uh, oxide material materials, which uh, are based on some nanostructures. We have a module which support communication with neighbors, power module which uh, support charge, discharge, monitoring, and some additional configurations to control the power source, and uh, general model module which controls, diagnose, uh, make some additional calculations for for all this uh, uh, architecture. Uh, we are trying to add uh, some additional in interventions in the traditional measuring technique. Uh, the general concept to measure the response of sensor, which is used until now and will be used, of course, in future is to to make the to measure the resistive response of the sensing uh, 
sensing element. And uh, this is not quite simple if you want to create a universal device which uh, support different uh, sensing types, different sensing materials, because uh, they have really different uh, proper resistance and really different response. This is the first problem. Uh, and the second problem is that uh, a lot of uh, materials don't really get uh, good response at the temperature level, uh, uh, ambient temperature. Uh, that's why we usually integrate those, uh, those sensing elements into some micro heaters or some element which uh, heat the, the sensing uh, element. And all these uh, kinds of additional, uh, uh, additional electronical components uh, consume energy as well, and we should keep that in mind. Uh, that's why we moved a little bit in, in our direction and tried to measure not the resistance, not the resistant, resistive response, but the capacitive one. And here um, we minimize the, the consumption, uh, not using the heater. Actually, we still use it, but uh, I think we will move through the totally heatless uh, configuration. And um, those, we, we, we raise the operating time of, of this device up to four. 500%. Of course, there is no silver bullet and um, removing the heater, we create the problems which this heater resolved. The selectiveness uh, became worse. So if we need the real selective sensor, uh, we have or to think some kind of improvements or uh, to add some heating source. And uh, Usually, without the, the heat, uh, the sensor response is, is, uh, is lower. But uh, actually, if sensor is capacitive base, the, the response is good enough. Yes, it's not the same uh, level as uh, being uh, re resistance, but it's OK to measure that those level. It's usable. Um, so going with direction and trying to integrate this into the some kind of network, uh, we add a communication mod module, which now is a Bluetooth one with Bluetooth mesh protocol. So as I said, theoretically, it support like tens of thousands of nodes. Uh, of course, we didn't test it because it's a large number, but um, I believe in these measures since they are logical one. There is the problem since the Bluetooth is a broadcast based network, which uh, means that within the network will be a lot of additional traffic, which is not quite useful, but it should be because the mesh network is the unstable one. Uh, the general concept of this kind of network is that uh, node may be online, may be offline, uh, it may be per periodically uh, started, pa paused, stopped. So the mesh network is a very dynamic thing. So that's why uh, it should be broadcast based. It should be excessive by itself. Um, yes, and the third problem, the third important mo module which was uh, implemented, tested, it's uh, a module of power control and power calculation based on the solar element. Since we are trying to keep uh, the network nodes autonomous, it should power himself in the autonomous mode. And here are some uh, uh, experiment testing how uh, the module is charging and discharging. This experiment uh, shown here are with the heaters, uh, which they are not quite uh, relevant to the capacitive, uh, capacitive uh, based sensors. But soon I think we will have some results for the capacitive too. 
Uh, actually, uh, the image we have here, if we will calculate uh, for how long one node may work with a simple solar cell, simple battery and the heat resistive base sensor, it will mean that it should be started like once in two or three hours and uh, sleep like three hours. Start it will work some several seconds and uh, sleep again for like three hours. So if we don't uh, hurrying and monitoring, usually it's okay to measure the gas level once at three, three hours, but if we need the really, really fast response, if we want to see the actual image of the, of the environment, uh, it's, this period is not quite good. Um, additionally, we have developed uh, a simple algorithm to, to monitor the charge, the remaining charge in the battery in order to even uh, uh, measure the period. So if the battery is not uh, charged, maybe it's almost empty. We are not running the node uh, too often. So the period always uh, is increasing if the battery is discharged. So basically the node is waiting for some light source in order to, to charge it with battery and then the period will be, will be higher again. And uh, as, a, as a result, uh, we, we see some uh, good combinations, some good uh, uh, some good uh, approach to make the device, of course, capacitive base without heater, uh, without uh, this uh, dairy consuming uh, element, uh, with some integrated algorithms of uh, frequency period calculation for the next measurement. And also, we just started, it is not in here in presentation. Also, we are implementing some additional uh, protocol, which will take into account the, the charge level, because the communication mod module is a consuming one as well. I didn't mention it, but uh, the antenna, the communication is uh, a, a consuming element, one of the most consuming elements of the device. So the next uh, good improvement is going to be some algorithm which will take into account which device is more charged and then the communication will move through those more charged devices. So this is the, the, the idea of, the, of our devices. So I want to help to thank you for the audience, of course, for the uh, Nanotech, Nanosensor Research Center, where um, this work is done and skip being developed, to the Moxas project, which helped uh, us to to create some this kind of devices, and of course to the organizers for this beautiful conference. So I'm ready for your questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation.